Hi everybody, these notes are from Monday. Today we are going to talk about the rational root theorem. So you can put that in your table of contents of your di uh, digital notebook. Uh, at the top of your paper, because remember we're just handwriting everything now, is that it's notes 2a, 3.4, the rational root theorem. So this is, is from our workbook. You're gonna um, need to have your workbook out because we'll be doing some examples from there as well. I believe it's page 101, but let me double check. Yeah, you'll need page 101. All right, so you don't have to write down the essential question, but at the end, we're gonna say, how does the rational root theorem make finding zeros easier? What are P and Q? Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about something called the rational root theorem. On Friday, we learned how you can find zeros using synthetic division, and we had to just guess and check, okay? We just had to randomly guess numbers. The rational root theorem is gonna make it a little bit easier for us to decide which numbers to guess and check with. We're still gonna have to guess and check, but it's gonna make it a little bit easier for us to decide on what numbers to use with our guess and check, okay? All right, so our rational root theorem is going to use the polynomial, um, so our function f of x is equal to q x to the power of whatever, a number, and it's gonna have all of your terms being added, and at the end, we have our constant that we're gonna call p. Okay, so here's what the rational root theorem says. It says that every rational root, so a rational root, or the word rational means that it can be written as a fraction, so this does not include ones that are radicals, okay? Every rational root of a polynomial f of x equals zero, so we're trying to find that our roots can be written as p divided by q. Where p is a factor of the constant and q is the leading co uh, and Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Okay, so Q is the leading coefficient. That is the number in front of your x that has the highest exponent, the biggest degree, that coefficient in front, and then p is your constant. So we're looking at the factors of those pieces, okay? So in other words, like what does that mean, okay? In other words, what does that mean? It means that all possible roots of the polynomial are all possible rational um, whole number or fractions a polynomial will be plus or minus on top of the fraction is your factor of a constant and on the bottom will be a factor of the leading coefficient. So let's go do an example of this before we move on to the rest of the part of our notes, okay? So I need you to grab page 101 and I'll show you how this works, okay? So grab page 101 from your workbook, okay? So the rational root theorem, um, example number one says to use the rational root theorem to list all possible roots. We're just gonna list all possible. We're not gonna find the roots. We're just gonna list all of them that are possible for this equation right here. 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 9x plus six equals zero. So that's um, a fourth degree polynomial, okay? So the first thing you need to do is identify your constant term and your leading coefficient. So this polynomial is written in the correct order. It's descending order, starts with the highest exponent, works down to your constant. So this number right here in the front is what we call the leading coefficient. It's the leader, leading coefficient. And this guy down at the very end without any variables on it 
is our constant. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to do is identify those. All right, so this one right here we call our Q. This one we're going to call P, okay? So Q is two, P is six. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna identify all the factors of the constant term and the leading coefficient. So P goes on top and Q goes on the bottom when we make our fractions. So P is the number six. We're gonna list out all of the factors. Factors are number that divides in evenly. So I start with one and then I go up to whatever the number is. So one divides in evenly, two divides in evenly, three divides in evenly. We're dividing into six. Does four divide in evenly to six? No. Does five divide in evenly? No. Does six divide in evenly? Yes. So we stop at six. Q, okay, Q is the number two. And we list all the coefficient or the, all of the factors. So one divides into two, two divides into two. That's it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make fractions plus or minus, okay, P divided by Q, the factors of P and Q, okay? So we start with plus or minus. I take P, so I'm gonna start with the number one, okay? And I'm gonna put one over, and then I just put it over both of these numbers right here. So one over one, one over two, plus or minus one over one, plus or minus one over two. Then I go on to the, my next one, I go to the number two and I make fractions, two over one, two over two. So I'm making little arrows, but then I'm erasing them. So plus or minus um, two over one, plus or minus two over two. And then I go to the three, I make a fraction, three over one, three over two, plus or minus three over one, plus or minus three over two. Then I go to my last one is six, and I make two more fractions, six over one, six over two. Plus or minus, six over one, plus or minus, six over two. And then I do simplify and get rid of any like doubles, you'll see what I mean. So plus or minus one over one, that's just plus or minus one. Plus or minus one over two, that's just plus or minus one half, can't simplify that. Plus or minus two over one, that's just two, plus or minus two. Plus or minus two over two, well two divided by two is one and we already wrote that. Okay, plus or minus three over one, that's just three. Plus or minus three over two, we can't simplify that, so plus or minus three over two. Now we have plus or minus six over one, that's just plus or minus six. And then plus or minus six over two, which is plus or minus three, and we already have that one written. So these are all of the possible rational roots. Okay, so this doesn't mean that it's any of the imaginary roots. You could just still have imaginary roots. You could have roots that have radicals in them, um, but these are the possible rational ones. So instead of having an infinite number of um, possible roots when you do guess and check, we've now narrowed it down to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 because it's plus 1, minus 1, plus a half, minus a half, plus 2, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3, plus 3 halves, minus 3 halves, plus 6, minus 6. So you um, have narrowed it down to 12 options instead of an infinity amount of options that you could try with guess and check, okay? All right, let's finish our notes part and then we're only gonna do one more example for today. So let's talk about the number and types of solutions that you can get, okay? So the number and types of solutions that you get. So there's two different types of solutions you can get. We've kind of already talked about this before that you can have solutions, they can either be real or imaginary. That's the type. And your polynomial degree, whatever your polynomial degree is, is your maximum number of solutions. So if you have a polynomial of degree four, then you know that the, the maximum number of solutions you can have is four. Okay, so that kind of limits you so that you know, know how many maximum number it is. You can have less, but you can't have maximum. Okay, so here the next thing we have is the Descartes rule of sine. I think it's called Descartes. I don't think I'm saying that right. Descartes, Descartes. Okay, his rule of signs. So his rule of signs that the um, number of positive real solutions get a different color. 
Okay, the number of positive real solutions will match the number of sign changes sign changes in the polynomial or be less by two, four, six, eight. It's gonna go down by twos. I should have written by. Etc. So it's gonna go down by twos. So um, what this means, this little like example, if you, it says identify the possible number of positive real solutions. This first term is positive, right? And then it turns negative. So that's one sign change. I shouldn't draw so many circles. So there's one sign change here. It goes from positive to negative. Then it goes from negative to positive. So that means that you could have another possible root. So you're at two. Then it goes from a positive to a negative, so that means that you can have a third one. Then it goes from negative to positive again, so that means you could have a possible of four roots. And then it goes from positive to negative again, so that's a fifth sign change, okay? There's a possible five sign changes. So what that means is you can either have five real po uh, positive solutions, positive roots, or it will go down by two. So five minus two is three. So you'd have three real positive and two imaginary, or it could go down by two again. Three minus two is one. You could have one real positive and four imaginary. Uh, but if you subtract two minus one, you would get negative and you can't have that, okay? All right, so let's go do our last example for today. So this is just to help you decide how many answers you're looking for, okay? So it says, example two, find all the roots of the polynomial equation, 4x cubed minus x squared plus 36x minus nine. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, identify how many maximum, okay? So there's a power of three. So the maximum we're looking for is three roots. There's one sign change, two sign change, three sign change. So you're either gonna have three positive real answers or you're going to have one positive real answer and two imaginary, okay? And how I got all that was the degree is three. So I have a max of three and there's three sign changes. So my options are three positive or one positive and two imaginary. Okay, so those are my options. All right, now I'm gonna use my P and Q to list, oops, I did two Qs, my P and Q to list my possible um, roots that I'm gonna use for guess and check. Because we wanna find the roots ourselves, so we have to do guess and check. So my factors of P, I'm not gonna pay attention to the negative, because we're gonna do plus and minus anyways. So numbers that divide into nine. One divides into nine, two doesn't, three divides into nine, four doesn't, five doesn't, six doesn't divide in evenly to nine, seven, eight, nine, divides in evenly to nine. So those are my options. Then I look at Q. Q is four. One divides in evenly. Two divides in evenly to four. Three doesn't. Four does. All right, so from there, I'm gonna list my little factors of P and Q, um, the plus or minus. So my options are, I could have plus or minus, and you do one over one, one over two, one over four. So one over one, plus or minus one over two, plus or minus one over four. Then you do the same thing with the three. So you do three over one, plus or minus three over one, plus or minus three over two, plus or minus three over three. Nope, three over four, sorry. Then you do the nine, so plus or minus nine over one, plus or minus nine over two, plus or minus nine over four. Okay, so we know we're gonna at least have one possible. There's either three positive real solutions or one positive real solution. So I'm gonna do my guess and check and I'm gonna use the positive numbers, okay? All right, so with positive numbers, I shouldn't have said two imaginary because they could have been negative. Okay, 
So I'm gonna try, um, I'm only gonna do positive. So one over one is one. So I'm gonna do guess and check, and I'm gonna use um, positive one to start. So I'm gonna use positive one, and I have a coefficients of four x cubed, negative one x squared, 36 x, and negative nine is my constant. So we move our first number down, that's four, multiply by one. Add coming down, multiply by one. Add coming down, multiply by one. Do I get zero in the remainder box? No. So that's not an answer. So we're still guessing and checking, but we've narrowed down our numbers that we have to do guessing and checking with. So this time I'm gonna try plus or minus one half, but we said we have at least one real positive number, so I'm gonna try one half. So I'm repeating the process. This time I'm using one half, move down the four. A half of four is two. Add coming down, I get one. A half of one is a half. 36 plus a half is 36.5. Half of 36.5 would be, I think, 18.25. It doesn't matter because it didn't work, right? So then I'm gonna try, we're trying positives because we narrowed it down that we have to have at least one positive. I'm gonna try one half. No, I already tried one half, I'm gonna try one fourth. So I have four, negative one. 36, negative nine. All right, so I moved down my first number, that's four. I should have changed colors. Moved down my first number, that's, I think I thought I changed colors. My first number is four. So when you take a fourth of something, you're dividing it by four. So a fourth of four is one. Add coming down, we get zero. A fourth of zero is zero. Add coming down, we get 36. When you take a fourth of something, you divide. So 36 divided by four is nine. When I add coming down, I get zero. So if you guys were doing guess and check yesterday, we would have never thought to use one fourth because we were doing um, you know, negative four to positive four. We would have never thought to do a fraction, but we have one of our answers. So negative or positive one fourth. So don't forget that that's one of our answers. And then we're gonna use the depressed polynomial to try to solve. So um, remember that next to the remainder is a constant, the coefficient on x, coefficient on x squared. So now we're gonna solve 4x squared. You don't have to put the plus 0x, plus 36 equals zero. You see how it doesn't have any x's in the middle? We could actually do that two or three step solving where we go ahead and just isolate x and then do the square root. Because when I divide, I know I went pretty fast, but I subtracted 36, divided by four, and I was just trying to get x squared by itself. Because when I get x squared by itself, I get negative nine. And the way that you can get rid of an x squared is you just have to square root both sides. When I square root, I get negative nine, which means that it's going to be an i, and then you just do the square root of regular nine. So I get x equals, it's actually plus or minus three i, because the square root of nine is three. So I have an answer of one fourth, that was a real answer. I have positive three i and I have negative three i, and that's my answers. There's three, one positive and two imaginary, okay? All right, we're not gonna do example three until tomorrow. What you can do is go put your notes. I did two pictures, you might only have one, and that's okay if for your notes you did two, uh, or one picture, if you could fit it all on one page, that's fine. I did two pictures. Um, the rational root theorem on one side and the number of types of solutions on the other. This is slide 12. And then on slide 13, you can do this example one right here. We did this one, but we haven't done this one till tomorrow. So you can take the picture of this one tomorrow, but you can put this example one in right now. All right, we'll finish the notes. We have like two examples that we didn't finish on Friday and today. And so we'll finish those ones tomorrow and talk about them. All right, bye.